A lot of the time we can't actually code exactly the way we want to. Depending on the context, there are usually risks and trade-offs to consider, and often people we would need to convince. When I'm working on production client code, I'm going to evaluate these risks differently than when I'm working on my own code. Even content for YouTube and teaching material is quite restrictive. Whilst I might get the opportunity to work on code using more experimental features or ideas for a video, I can't really just start using whatever experimental tech I like in all of my content. So there are surprisingly few scenarios in which I get to build things exactly the way I want, using whatever unstable or experimental concepts my heart desires. As it turns out, these scenarios typically end up being when I'm writing production code for myself. And since I find myself currently working on my AI tech bro SaaS startup, I thought some people might find it fun or interesting to see how I go about coding an Angular application when I don't have any restrictions and when the only person paying for the risks I take on is future me. Now to address the elephant in the room first, naturally I'm using the analog component format. We've already talked about this recently, so I won't spend any more time on it here, but for anyone unfamiliar, this is an alternative component authoring format for Angular components that is provided by Analog.js. Essentially, this just gets compiled to the same thing as this. And the Analog format has other cool things like Markdown support as well. If you do want more of an elaboration on what this format is and why I like it, I'll link to the other videos in the description. I'm also using NX in this project, as I do with basically all my projects, but my usage of it is pretty standard. Again, I'll link to some other videos if you're interested in that aspect. The main thing I want to focus on in this video is how I'm going about creating this service. Specifically, how I'm using the create injectable and signal slice utilities that Chow Tran and I built for NG extension. So we have create injectable that is creating an injectable service for us here which is an alternative to using a class-based service and the injectable decorator. And we have signal slice for managing the state within that service. Let's focus on create injectable first, which is probably the more controversial of the two. To be clear, I'm not trying to say this is an inherently better way of approaching services, but I can tell you what I like about it and why I would want to use it. As has been suggested in response to the previous video on this topic, it isn't because of some sort of pathological desire to eliminate classes from Angular. Whilst I do find the idea of Angular without classes or decorators interesting, primarily I like this idea of a factory function that returns whatever you want to expose publicly as the basis for creating a service. We have this function and we do whatever we need inside of the function, and then we have it return whatever it is we want this service to expose publicly. Everything else is private by default. And whilst this isn't a particularly important point, I do like that this removes the need to introduce decorators into the code base when, in combination with the analog format, the necessity to use decorators anywhere else in the application has been removed. There are other small nice things about using a factory function instead of a class, like the ability to use shorthand like this, but fundamentally, the key thing I like is that only what is returned is exposed publicly. In this case, I am exposing just the signal slice state object, but we could return whatever we like. So let's talk about signal slice now. This creates a mostly declarative little slice of state. This utility was designed around the general declarative and reactive concepts I usually talk about, but with a focus on removing the need for all the boilerplate. We have observables that are sources of data, we might load in some data from an API, for example. We supply these sources to our signal slice and we map them so that they emit data that is a partial of the state we want to store. And then that data is automatically made available as a signal. The other way we can change the state in our signal slice is via user actions, which signal slice calls action sources. Essentially the same idea as a normal source, but it is triggered by some manual action. These actions are defined up front, we trigger them whenever we need, and again we map these streams to whatever values we want to set in the state. In my case here, I only have action sources. I don't have any standard sources because I don't have any kind of initial state that I need to load in for this service. For example, when the select video action is triggered, I want to show the file dialog. I use start with to immediately emit selecting file on the stream to change the state to that. 
And once the asynchronous process of selecting a file is completed, the stream emits file selected, which will set the state to that, along with also adding the video path to the state as well. If we need to trigger side effects as the result of state changes, we can do that using standard signal effects. The key thing I like about Signal Slice is that it is reasonably declarative. The only way you can change state is through either sources or action sources, and these are defined upfront when the Signal Slice is created. There is no concept of imperatively updating state outside of these sources. It is very low boilerplate, and at least I find the API nice to work with. And I think it also ties in really nicely with the create injectable approach. Everything you need from this service is contained within this signal slice object. All of the state as signals, any custom selectors we've defined, and all of the action sources we can trigger. And so we just return that single signal slice object. Everything else is private by default. This, for me, is basically what my ideal service looks like. So the point of this video was not to convince anybody that the methods I'm using here are better than anything else. These are just the patterns and features I find most compelling at the moment, and I'm willing to take on some level of risk in using some of these more experimental features in production. That is ultimately how we move toward making new things stable and smooth out the experience for people who might want to give it a try in the future without taking on as much risk. Or we discover downsides or limitations to the approaches as we try them out in more realistic scenarios, which often include difficult edge cases. Even if a particular idea ends up not working out, it's still often a great way to learn and contextualize the things we do use. Anyway, feel free to leave a comment with any thoughts you have about the approaches in this video, or the more experimental ideas or features that you like to use in your own projects. A like or subscribe before you go would be very much appreciated, and I hope to see you back here again.